I'm here with Dave Elmendor, the club manager of the Texas A&M campus course. Dave, what a facility. Tell me a little bit about the genesis here. Well, uh, it started uh, right. several years ago. Uh, Jeff Bloom did a master plan uh, for the university and uh, uh, it was revisited a few years ago and, and it became a public-private partnership between Sterling Goff and Texas A&M and that's really how it got done with the intention of not only building a, a great golf course here but cleaning up the front door of campus and making it representative of the type of, of turf grass education you get here at A&M. So that's how it happened and uh, Sterling Goff and, and A&M should be given all the credit for it. If you played football and baseball here. I did. Quite a uh, quite an athlete. Well, thank you. What are your thoughts and quite a golfer, I understand. Oh, no, I'm not a very good <laughs> golfer, but I've been in the golf business for a long, long time and I, I do love the game of golf. I really like the operations of golf. What do you think about the Olympics coming, uh, bringing golf back into the Olympics? I think that's wonderful. Golf is such a great game. It's such a, a game of integrity and uh, you think, I, when I think of the Olympics, I think of that integrity and uh, it's a, it's a good match. Texas A&M had, I believe, 23 Olympic Olympians in the London Games recently. Uh, mainly in track and field, I guess, and swimming? That would make a lot of sense because our, our track program has been so good here uh, over the last few years with the national championships and, of course, the swimming program as well. Tell me a little bit about the turf program here. I played with... Uh, Bobby and Ricky Heine. Yes, they and, were consultants uh, on this golf course uh, for the university working with, uh, with Landscapes Unlimited. And uh, the turf grass education here at Texas A&M, of course, Texas A&M, agricultural and mechanical, uh, I think it's as good as there is. Uh, we turn out some of the best uh, golf course superintendents anywhere in the world. Uh, and it's a world-class education uh, if you're interested in learning how to grow grasses. Your thoughts on uh, the Olympic spirit of golf and golfers as we get to the 2016 Olympics. Nobody's played in the Olympics for 112 years, golf. Uh, what do you think defines the key characteristics of an of a Olympian golfer? You know, I really don't know the answer to that. Uh, obviously, you have to be able to play the game well. It should be a heck of a competition then. <laughs> uh, this will be like, I guess, all the other great big competitions uh, that we have, the, the world uh, golf competitions. Well, I got to say, I just loved your course, the design, the conditioning, uh, just being here by the university. I, I kind of felt like I should be in class or something. It's so close to the university. <laughs> well, it's right but on the front of campus, 170 acres, uh, well designed by Jeff Bloom, who is an Aggie, and he also has a great resume. I've worked with him on other projects, and uh, and well built by Landscapes Unlimited, and we just hope people will come out and, and uh, give it a try. I think they'll enjoy it. The rock on the way to the first tee has Robert Sterling Steele from the class of 80. Can you tell me anything about him? I can tell you everything about that. Robert Steele, class of 80, is uh, the owner of Sterling Golf Incorporated. He's an Aggie, and, uh, and it, it was his company that made this thing happen, Sterling Golf, uh, in a negotiation with the, with the university. And his CEO is Rene Rangel, who uh, was a college golfer, a very good player. And he did the negotiations with A&M for Sterling Golf, so that's how it all happened. He's got a nephew at UH that's uh, quite a good golfer. I understand here. he hits it a long, <laughs> long way. Dave, your uh, most special memory from this, the grand opening day. I, I think I, what I did today was I sat on number two, uh, and it was a par three where we had a, a hole-in-one car available. I was there for two reasons, one to, wit to witness if there was a hole-in-one, but more importantly I wanted to, to talk to the golfers as they came through. A number of the players I know very well, and I wanted to get their comments about the golf course. And, uh, and that worked out very well because I didn't hear any negatives, and I heard a lot of people just like you that said, it's a terrific golf course, and I believe that to be true. Well, Dave, thank you for inviting me here today, and thank you for your time. My pleasure. I'm glad you came.